stretching far and wide global ministry talk show. I'm your host, Dr. Barbara Jackman. And I'm your host, Dr. Dwayne Barnes. Amen. Today in the studio we have with us Vicki Smith, who is the mother of Anthony Lindell McCray. She, sat, she founded the Anthony Lindell McCray Foundation uh, when her son was murdered in Brooklyn. And today she is in the studio with us to share how she has taken her pain and turned it into purpose. There are many mothers who experience the loss of a child and some give up and some are depressed and some need some support. But this mother has truly turned her pain into purpose and today she will share that uh, testimony and what she's been through with us. But Dr. Bonds, I'm going to ask you to share with us what you know about um, this mother, Vicki Smith, and um, some of what, uh, how you met her, and then we'll allow her to share uh, her testimony with us. Amen. Well, I met Vicki through my wife, and uh, we also went to the same church. I've also had the pleasure of um, walking with her during her nonviolent marches and being a part of what is she is doing in the community. And I just wanted to bring her here and, and just hear this story because the loss of a child is a parent's nightmare. So um, I'm just gonna um, turn it back to you so we can speak to, first let's have Vicki introduce herself to um, our audience. Wow, thank you. I thank you for having me. I'm just so glad to be here and to share my story with so many others who are dealing with the same situation that I am dealing with. And yes, it takes a lot to acknowledge the loss and to move on. But on June 16, 2011, I received a call that my son had been shot and killed on the corners of Rockaway and Herkimer Streets in Brooklyn. And um, I... I, it was surreal. I could not even tell you where I could, you know, think, how I could think, first of all, because I was at work. And a friend of mine for 40 years, her and I went to school together. She originally called me and told me I needed to come there. And when I arrived to the location, Anthony was still laid there on the street and had been laying there for so many hours. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it, it's, it's been replaying over in my head over and over and over again. But again, we as parents, we have people in our community, church, schools, workshops, things we have to reach out and try to revive and restore and renew our younger generation because the youth are our future. Yeah. So this is why Anthony was a, was a fine young man, worked two jobs, uh, a fine father who had just had a son, so mm -hmm. I am a proud grandmother. But it's still, it's still a tragic loss <clears throat> in my family. And again, we are not coping well because we don't know how to. A lot of times we don't know how to as parents and, and, and as a people. Um, so I'm, I'm thanking God for, for you all for having this segment. It is it's definitely needed and I, I just don't want any more members to this unique group of uh, this organization because it's, I don't want anybody to suffer the way that I've suffered. You know, it's this Amen. tragedy. Amen. In reference to the march, share some, some information with us. How you got involved with the March movement? Um, I want to say a year after Anthony was killed, the 500 men in law enforcement contacted me and along with Eric Adams and they said they wanted to be a part of, make, found a coalition in his name and I was I was so happy and honored because you know um, it's not every day that you get a group of people to call you and say let's do this in honor of your son because contrary to what the, 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 the news media and everybody else outside of these um, areas looking in, they like to think our children is a, is a product of the environment, yes. which is not true. So we, as parents, we spend a lot of time proving everyone to be wrong to say, listen, right. just because my son was killed, that doesn't mean he was into anything. He was just in the wrong place, truly at the wrong time. So when they contacted me, I was, I, was, I was so overjoyed. I was overwhelmed. And now we have meetings, um, wow, twice a month, okay. sometimes every other month. And the founder originally, um, we started the walks, the peace walks. We just had our first one in August. That was our first annual peace walk, which we walked from the uh, Magnolia Treehouse in Brooklyn all the way up to um, 
when was it to um restoration center okay. where we had other mothers meeting us there and it, it's been a lot it's been a lot of people who have just said i want to be a part of i want to be a part of this big thing you have going on because they have a vested interest okay. not because of anthony they have lost someone they've known some people who have lost someone and it's constantly happening all the time so you know we suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder mm. which is another topic either you're you're dealing with it first and foremost because you buried your child or you're scared to come out of your home you're scared to send your children outside because you're thinking something is going to happen to them so these are the these are the things that we try to touch on in our meetings and our walks mm. uh, i also experienced um, a loss of a nephew at the age of 22 who was murdered um, at the j uh drake the j train um the Broadway Junction train station. Mm -hmm. um, it was three boys that were stabbed and my nephew was the only one that died. Um, inside of that particular train station, they have cameras. But we were told on that particular day, the cameras was not on. Mm -hmm. So of course, to this day, um, the person who murdered him has not been found. And I read in the article, um, I believe so, that the person who murdered your son was not found. Is that Absolutely. correct? Absolutely. Tell me from your perspective, how does it make you feel that um, the murderer is still um, at large or have not been apprehended? One word, angry. I am very angry. I want to um, handle things my own way and try to beat the streets and find out things my own way. But, you know, we as... A, as adults, we have to learn how to let the NYPD do their job to the, to the best of their ability. But at the same time, I have no control over his friends, over who, you know, so many people are angry, so many people are trying to get closure. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the young, the young people don't, you know, they're kind of like, why Anthony? He was the peacemaker. He was the one that kind of put everything together, you know, basketball games between Bloods and Crips. That was very, very rare. So I'm very angry because I feel like if there was anything else going on, they would have caught the person. They would have person would have been to trial and 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 been prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Yes. But I was also told and still told to this day, Anthony. We wish he had some type of connections. There's nowhere to start. Your son honestly got off the train and was standing here talking to this group of people, and was innocently killed. Mm. Knowing um, what I've, I've experienced myself and. Um, we thank you once again for sharing yes, this you. story with us. Um, and I, in my life, I feel that because the person was not apprehended, there, there is a hole. There is still, there's still no closure for me. What would you say to someone in um, that particular uh, mindset that there is no closure? What would you say to a mother um, who may be feeling the same way that I'm feeling that there is no closure? You know, it's, it, I get asked that question quite often because the answer is so, so rare that I can honestly say, I know what you're feeling. Mm. I know what you're going through. There's not many people that can come to you and say after you've buried your child, I really don't know what you're going through. I really don't know what you're feeling. But guess what? We have to go back to the basics. I am born and raised the Baptist church. I have to let things let God handle those he's supposed to handle. So with that in my mind, I keep that at the forefront. Vicki, this, this is not a fight for you. You have to let God, let go and let God handle this because it is going to stress you. It is going to eventually take over your body, your, your feelings, your emotions, and, and then you're going to be sick. You're, gonna, you're not going to be good to anyone. So let go and let God do his job. He doesn't need me to do his job. So those are the things I can't even know mothers trust me. I did not want to hear it. I did not want to hear it. But I tried to instill that in other parents because the anger is there and that hold is there. You know, these people are just running around the streets doing whatever they want. But guess what? It's a time and a place for everything. Mm -hmm. It's not our job to do that. We wasn't here to, to do that job. We're, out, we're overstepping our boundaries. Mm -hmm. We there's boundaries. So we have to step back and let God handle these people in his time. In the article, it also says that you share with us that you are a proud grandmother. Yes, I um, am. <laughs> and uh, we know that Anthony had a son. Uh, tell us how 
how, how the son is doing. Wow. Carter is six years old, and uh, he lives in North Carolina with his mom, who, that's like my best buddy. Uh, he is my son all over again, and he is uh, very smart and very busy, and that's my honey. He thinks that's my name, honey. I told him my name is Vicky, but, <laughs> you know, he, he thinks my name is honey, but it's okay. I still love him dearly, and he is he is just awesome. He really is. He misses his dad. He he said he was thankful this Thanksgiving for Jesus and God Amen. and his dad. Amen. Amen. I couldn't ask for anything else. All right. Amen. <laughs> Dr. Barnes, do you have any questions? Yeah, I, you know, you you said you mentioned that um, Eric Adams, and I was at the march where Tony Herbert was yes. there. Um, so you had some support from the political arena, but what do you say sometimes to those mothers who, while sometimes people are screaming "Black Lives Matter," when the police or of a Caucasian you know, murders their child, but when their child is killed in the community by, let's say, another African-American and no one is screaming that Black Lives Matter and those mothers are hurting, how do we deal with that issue? It's such a, we, we are such a conditioned people in our, in our communities. We are so um, easily led to believe that it's okay if we're killing ourselves because that is, quote unquote, the norm. Um, but for police officers, killing our, our youth and, and shooting them, it, it, I have a bigger fish to fry mm -hmm. when it comes to that. Because yes, I know that police officers are not always in the right. Sometimes they don't handle things ethically and professionally like they should. Their training sometimes need to be upscale and learning how to, how to deal with people within the, the, the community that they police. Mm -hmm. But all black lives matter, whether you are unfortunately killed by NYPD or you, we have to face this black on black crime. This, 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 mm -hmm. is, this is serious. Uh, uh, police officers shooting our young black men in the streets is so old news to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, wow. from slavery. It's so old news mm -hmm. to me. This black on black crime, I, it has to it has to end somewhere. We don't even respect True. one another enough to allow someone to say good morning, how are you, to another brother walking down the street, as opposed to waiting, wanting the police officer to have p professionalism mm -hmm. and courteous. It's not going to happen. We have to start with ourselves first. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have to start amongst ourselves. Mm. So if that's not going to happen, we're fighting like this battle. And yes, I, I feel for all parents who have lost their, their children, whether yes. it be to yes. police officers, unfortunately, mm -hmm. or, or, or each other in the streets of, of Brooklyn, Queens, Bronx, Jersey, wherever. I feel for them because it's a common denominator that we share, mm. the loss of a child. But I want to focus on just us killing us. That's enough for me. Mm. Mm. That's enough for me. Amen. So with the foundation, Anthony Lindell McCray Foundation, tell us what are your future plans for the foundation? Wow. Our mission, first of all, is to revive, restore, rejuvenate, and to, to just get our young people involved and let them know that there are things out there that you can do to help each other. You don't always have to bring each other down. I want them more. Anthony, one of the things Anthony loved to do every year was gather up his friends and feed the homeless. He would track to the city with 30, 40 friends wow. and my sister and feed the homeless. So that's something we're pushing towards next year. His friends got together and did that this year. It was awesome. Wow. And I let them do it. It was a youth. It was all youth, all young people. And they did it. They had the place. They had the food. It was phenomenal. All I did was offer up my services. And of course, my board members came out to support. But we we're pushing forward to to great things and we want we want everybody to be involved every year in June I sit on the board with the crime victims unit in Albany and every year there's a brick lane for ch ch people who have lost their lives to gun mm -hmm. violence any type of victims and the bricks are fifteen dollars and there's a walkway okay. that the bricks are laid every year and a big ceremony every year in June that the, that the state of Albany gives in honor of these people these victims that have lost their lives. So last year was a big event, and we're just pushing forward to getting our youth involved with more of the feeding the homeless, okay. going out and helping one another, helping our elderly in the community, and, and first of all, helping yourself. 
You have to know how to help yourself before you can help anyone else. For those who want to be track workers and have dreams of being, uh, you know, being in, in a laborer or, or a track worker or a steel worker, whatever, we need to guide them on where they need to be because we can always preach it. Yes. But in order to get them to go to that forefront, we have to be able to say, listen, if you want to do this, you need to be in this realm right here. Mm -hmm. You need to be doing and hanging with people that's doing what you want to be. Wherever you want to be, that's where you need to be. You want to be a police officer, go on down to the police officer department and volunteer. Get on whatever services you think you can to become a police officer. Don't be afraid because right. this is this is what the guidance is about. So we're know, renewing, renewing and restoring that the youth is, is important to me. Amen. That's awesome. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. In reference to your uh, peace march to stop the violence, uh, since you had that peace walk, um, is there any results that that came from uh, the walk, or is there something that you would um, uh, like to see come from your peace walks? Wow. The, the main thing that I that I saw come from the peace walk was when we were staging, when we finally got to a uh, restoration center, there were so many testimonies about people who have been incarcerated now trying to reach our young people to tell them, listen, this is a serious thing y'all out here got going on. Mm -hmm. Y'all need to, well, after one man said he did 30 years in jail. Wow. And came home to find that his nephew was killed and now he's try he's involved because of that. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that make me that, that, that our peace walks mean so 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 much to me because people just started joining out of nowhere and it was it was awesome. Mm -hmm. It really was. So to hear that these people who have been incarcerated and learned the lesson and now passing on the lesson to the next generation is awesome because who know better than them? They were already incarcerated for not wow. doing the right thing. Wow. So they're trying to guide the youth again, re renew, rejo re 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 rejoice, and, and 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 restore all of the things that they may have lost along the way. Wow, amen. We thank you, um, Sister Vicky, for thank sharing you. your story yes. with us. Thank you for having me. Amen. In the studio with us also we have Barbara Gifford and we have Cheryl West, who are also mothers of uh, sons who were murdered um, here in Brooklyn. Um, and we're going to take a break and we'll come back and we'll ask them to join our discussion um, and see uh, how they're doing since uh, they've experienced also the loss of a son. So we'll be right back after this commercial break. Amen. By way of announcements, Stretching Far and Wide Global Ministry will be hosting our second annual clothes drive at 581 Mother Gaston Boulevard. There will be two sessions. The first one will be from 10 a.m. 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. We will take a break and then we will have the second session 530 uh, to 7 p.m. Join me on uh, December the 6th at Open House of Deliverance for All People, located at 390 Green Avenue between Bleecker and Green Avenue at 4 p.m. Also on December the 19th, Stretch and Far and Wide Ministry will be sponsoring a Christmas program at the Bushwick Nursing Home, December 19th at 2 p.m. And finally, Church and Farm Wide Global Ministry will be caroling in Red Hook on December 19th at 4 p.m. We will uh, later post the location so that those of you in Red Hook can join us for Christmas caroling. God bless you. Yes, we're back now. And I'm here right now with Barbara Gifford, who also lost a child. Um, Barbara, I had the pleasure of teaching you. I've gotten to know you. Could you tell us a little bit about your experience in finding out how you lost your child? Yes, Dr. Barnes. On January 19, uh, around 7 p.m., police officer knocked on my door and uh, he informed me that my child was stabbed in the back, and he rushed me to Kings County Hospital. 
When I got to the hospital, they told me he was in OR. So when he brought him out and I looked at my child, I knew. I knew that this was it for him. Uh, because they got his eye order and he was so cold and I was devastated, mm -hmm. very, very devastated because that morning he left to go to Transit Tech High School where he attended and <laughs> that evening someone knocked on the door. So, um, I am so glad that I met Dr. Barnes, Dr. Barbara Jackman, and also another mother, Mrs. Smith. I'm very, very glad to meet her of a murdered child. Um, the thing I, I, I'm still, I'm a little nervous right now. Uh, I'm still going through a lot. So I'm going to, I'm going through a lot. But he does have a daughter. Mm -hmm. She's beautiful. She is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And you know, she always tell me, Grandma, you always take care of me because she never knew her father. And one thing the Lord didn't let me do was to hate the people that did this to my son. Mm -hmm. wow. um, they were arrested because my nephew was detective and people came for it. Um, mm. Right now I'm still a little nervous. That's okay, that's okay. You've heard but, um, the story that Vicki Smith has given in reference to her son and how she's taken this pain and turned it to purpose, which is an excellent thing to do. That's how she dealt with it. She didn't suppress it. She dealt with it. And even though she is still going through uh, some of the pain of it, but she's taken this pain and she's done something with it. And it's been some years for, for you with the loss of your son. And we, we could never say, you know, that somebody have to get over it um, because this is a loved one and this is a child. But over the years, briefly share with us how you have dealt with the pain. Well, over the years, I prayed. Okay. I asked the Lord to, to ease this from me. And as, as the years go by, his birthday, Christmas is sort of my hardest time. Uh, but like I said, thank God I have his daughter. Amen. And she's Amen. very close to me. Amen. When when Sister Barbara Gifford heard that uh, Sister Vicki Smith was going to be here um, and present her story about her son, she wanted to be here. She wanted to be here, and not only uh, did she come, but she brought another mother with her, amen, who experienced the loss of a son. And I'm going to ask Sister Vicki if it's okay if you could briefly just say some encouraging words to these mothers. Wow. I, I, really, I really don't have the words art to articulate. But because he lives, mm. I, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all of my fears, they are gone, so gone. And because I know, I know, I know who holds my future, my life is worth, it's worth the living just because my Savior lives. Amen. To God be the glory. That yeah. says it all. To God be the yeah. glory. Amen. To God Amen. be the glory. Amen. Amen. So once again, Sister Vicki, we thank you for presenting your you. uh, story. Amen. It, it, it's going to 
uh, bless a lot of people. Amen. I know that it will. And once again, her foundation is up and running, the Anthony Lindell McCray Foundation. Amen. We um, Do we have the website? Do we have? All right. She's working on it. Amen. Amen. And we'll do an update and keep you all posted. Amen. For anyone who want to donate to the foundation, we'll make sure that information is out there. I believe it's going to be a great blessing. And once again, we just thank you for tuning in. Amen. I'm going to turn it to Dr. Bonds for some closing remarks, and then he can close us out in prayer. Amen. We just want to thank you again, Vicki, for being here, telling your story, because this means so much to so many people. Yes. We thank Barbara Giffey yes. for coming out. We thank Cheryl for being here. Yes. And we thank you all for joining us because what these women have experienced, the loss of a child is a parent's nightmare. So we, again, thank you, Vicki. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And we'll just close out right now in prayer. Heavenly Father, you know the hearts out there, Lord, the nightmare of losing a child. But as Vicki said, because you live, we can face tomorrow. Yes. So we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to share a story. But we also thank you that you are our comfort and you are the healer. So we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You are now a